Okay. All right. Very good. Very good. Never think about it. I'll look down and see if it's on. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you for turning it on. First Thessalonians chapter 1. What else would you preach on on Labor Day weekend except work? Okay. So, uh, a little Bible study on on work or labor. Throughout the Word of God, wow, it's over and over and over and over. That word is used. And it's used in a very good way for the most part. Physical labor throughout the Bible is uh, emphasized. As well as laboring in God's work. So there's both aspects of it. There's, you know, there's, there's physical work, there's mental work, uh, there's even emotional work, but there's spiritual work. And so all of this, all of this is part of it. I read just two verses in chapter 1 of 1 Thessalonians, and he's talking to them about their work in verse 2. We give thanks to God always for you. In fact, he says, for you all. If I say Paul was a southerner, well, he says you all so much. Okay? For you all. Making mention of you in our prayer. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith. Work of faith. Most people take those two terms as opposites. 
You either work or you have faith. But that's not at all. We work in faith, and we have faith that works. In Hebrews chapter 11, which is a faith chapter, we call it, faith chapter of the Bible, or some people call it the hall of faith, the hall of faith. It doesn't say by faith, Noah felt that he should for a certain way, for a certain way. No, it says what he did by faith. Because he believed God, this is what he did. So, he says, your work of faith, your labor of love. Oh, love changes, changes labor. I heard a story uh, of a lady whose husband passed away. He was a stern man, a hard man. And he had a list of things that he expected her to do. Timing, way it was to be done. Very specific, very stern, very hard man. After he passed away, she fell madly in love with another man who found who fell madly in love with her. And they just loved each other and had such a beautiful relationship. And she thought how much, though she loved her first thing, how different this man was and how he did not make demands of her. And she just, it was just a freedom, a freedom. And their love was just a beautiful thing. One day, going through some old things, she came across a list that her husband, her first husband, had given her. And she looked at that list and she thought, oh, wow, how good it is not to have to live under that kind of a relationship. And as she looked at it, she thought about, you know, the way it was and what a burden it was. And she started reading down the list. And as she read down the list, she stopped. And she said, everything that's on this list, I'm doing now. Ah, oh, what was the difference? It was a labor of love. And love as he did. Love as he said, I thank God. Remembering your work of faith, your labor of love, your patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. In the sight of God and our Father, knowing forever and be loved, your election of God. Father, I do ask that you just help us today to give ourselves in love and work for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> From the creation, God ordained labor. You know that whenever God created man, Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2, uh, whenever it comes to the beginning of chapter 2, as God finishes the creation, and uh, Adam and Eve are created as the crowning act of creation. And God finishes the work of creation. He assigns to Adam before the fall ever takes place. Before they ever partake of the forbidden fruit, God assigned them work to be done. He gave them something to do. Some people find it hard to imagine being in heaven where they say, you know, some people have the idea you float around on clouds playing harps and so forth like that. I don't think it's going to be like that at all. I think we're going to have meaningful things that we do. Now we're going to praise the Lord, but I think there are going to be things to be done for eternity that we will have good things to accomplish for the glory of God, even through eternity, that 
will have good things to do. God said to Adam, he said, I want you to tend and keep the garden. It seems as if, I don't know how to say it, because I don't know what it was like. <laughs> Maybe the grass needed to be mowed. No. Maybe the hedges needed to be trimmed. Maybe those things were there that needed to be taken care of. But God said, I want you to do this. This is your responsibility. And God came and talked with them every day in the evening. And it's, I don't know that it was like this, but it's almost like saying, God saying, well, this looks good. You did a good job today with Adam. Adam, this really looks nice. I like the way you did that. I like the way you edged down the sidewalk, and I like, you know, I'm sure it looked like that. But, you know, something like that. But there was work to be done. And God is pleased. The well, fact is, God himself labored in creation. And it says, on the seventh day, he rested from his labor. Isn't that interesting? Now, after the fall, after the fall, labor was harder. The, the ground demanded more things and produced things that were not particularly good. And it was a work. It was a work to get the ground to produce properly and to keep the weeds away so that the good things would grow and would not be interrupted by the briars and the thorns and the weeds that were there. And it was also that after the fall that God says, in the sweat of my brow shalt thou earn thy food. I was talking to some of the guys in the foyer this morning, and uh, there's just something good about sweat. I know there's some bad things about it too. But there's some good things that come from, from labor. I'm talking about physical labor. It's hard to rest from mental labor. It's hard to rest from that. It's hard to get a diversion from that because it lives with you all the time. Much study is a weariness of the flesh. But physical labor is honored by God. The, the sleep of a laboring man is sweet. You know, if you have trouble going to sleep at night, get out on your hands and knees in the heat of the day for a week for about four or five hours. And you go to sleep. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, a different, it's a different kind of thing. And, and whenever... Let me just talk to you just a little bit. Because of my age, because of the way the Lord has worked in my life, I have connection to a lot, even a lot of younger, younger people. And there's some younger preachers that I've talked with. Now, some on a regular basis, some on an occasional basis. But we have, we have in ministry, we have so many problems today with preaching. We have, we have many, many people who are just, especially in this day we're in right now, who are just depressed. And I think one reason for that is, is as preachers, we generally don't have anybody telling us when to show up, what to do, and when to go home. Now, none of us like that, but all of us need that. Okay? And whenever you don't have that, it's easy to become listless and feel non-productive. And it's just, it's just really hard. Labor gives schedule to your life. You know, and we don't much think about this as part of 
But in Ezekiel, the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 16, read a long chapter. And in verse 49, he likens the people of Jerusalem to the people of Sodom. And he said, the iniquity, the iniquity of Sodom was their fullness of bread and the idleness of their hands. <coughs> they ate too much and didn't work enough. And it produced in the lives of those people an abomination to God. Simply because they didn't have that, that structure. They didn't, they didn't work and they weren't hungry. They weren't hungry. If, if you look over in 2 Thessalonians, just turn a couple of pages. 2 Thessalonians in chapter 3. Paul deals with this. This is not talking about going to church. This is not talking about witnessing. This is not talking about taking care of the grounds and cleaning the church. And so it's not talking about your service for the Lord. It's not talking about the work of faith as far as spiritual work is concerned. This is just talking about physical labor. When we were with you, verse 10, chapter 3, 2 Thessalonians, for even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. Boy, that's hard. Hard. Difficult. Verse 11 says, We hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. Now them that are such, we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. But ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. Labor gives meaning to life. In all labor, Proverbs 14, 23, says in all labor there is trouble. But the talk of the lips bringeth the tenure, bringeth the poverty. Just talking about it, talking about it. There is, there's, there's profit, there's profit in labor. <laughs> it seems that God, though the word is not in the Bible, kleptomania, kleptomania is called a psychological disorder that people are compelled to take things that don't belong to them. And you know, you've heard stories about that, about people who have no reason at all to shop with. Just shop with. There's not because they don't, pay, don't have money to pay for it. It's just, it's just, you know, something to do. Something to do. And get caught. I've known people like that. And it seems like it's compulsive with some people. Now, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28 gives a solution to that. It says, let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor with his hands, working that which is good. And then it goes on beyond that. So let him that stole steal no more, but let him do physical labor. Let him do physical labor that he may have to give to others that have need. <clears throat> so the cure for that is physical labor to earn money to give away to someone else that is more needy than they are. I don't know. Sounds like a pretty good formula to me. I believe God knows what he's talking about. Now, that's physical labor. We could go on with that and on with that and on with that. God just, God just honors that. Thing. The earth gives up very reluctantly to uh, the needs that we have now because there is a sin first earth. And it's just like that. But the commandment says, it says, you know, we say, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. But Jesus, in interpreting that, says, six days shalt thou labor. Six days shalt thou labor and do thy work. 
but the seventh is the day of rest. And he says, part of that commandment, the day of rest, is emphasized. But the other six days, it's emphasized that work needs to be done. Okay? Now, God designs, desires, and demands that we as believers labor for him. There's a physical aspect to that. And there's a spiritual aspect to that. I've, I've heard uh, I've heard preachers say that preparing and preaching a sermon stand as the delivery of a sermon. I've heard preachers say the delivery of a sermon to stand and preach for 30 minutes is equal to physically working an eight hour day. I don't believe it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't believe that. Uh, I don't think it's like that at all. Uh, now, there is an exertion to it, and there is a physical drain to it, and there is an emotional drain to it. Uh, and the emotional drain probably is greater than anything uh, and the responsibility before God to open the Word of God and, and give the Word of God to you people with a proper understanding is a great responsibility for which I will ask, answer to God for. But, you know, there's also a great responsibility of sitting and listening. Sometimes it's more of a burden to listen than it is at other times. I understand that. But to sit and listen, and you give an account for how you listen, like I give an account for what I say. We're all accountable to God in, in these things. First Corinthians 15, 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, at the end of the resurrection chapter, after he talks about death being swallowed up in victory and about this mortal putting on immortality and this corruptible putting on incorruption and about the trump of God sounding and, and on the second coming of Christ, and he says, in light of that resurrection, in the light of the coming of Christ, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Abounding. That means doing, not just doing enough, but doing more than enough. Abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Man, with what the Lord has done for us and with the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, let us work now in the time that we have here on this earth. Let us work. Now is the time of labor. Jesus said, while well, he was on the earth, you do not read much about Jesus resting. He did say to the disciples, come apart and rest a while. The only time we have any reference in the Word of God to the Lord Jesus Christ sleeping is that time he was asleep in the boat on the Sea of Galilee. And the disciples are saying, No, oh, Master, care you, care us thou not that we perish, you know, do something, do something, do something. Well, he can do something. And he did do something. And he awoke, stood, kept away his feet. Be still. Just stop it. Stop it. Stop it right now. And they just, it does not seem the way to settle that. It seems, well, it seems like the way just choo, They just stop right where they were because the master spoke to him. You know he's the master. See? He's the master. He speaks, and the wind and the waves obey him. The wind that night on the Sea of Galilee didn't just begin slowing down. It stopped. And the waves stopped. He said this. I must work the works of him that sent me. Now may all of us take that to heart in our life. 
the words of our Lord. And if we're going to be like him, then we must work the works that God has given us to do. Want a manual? Here it is. But you know the secret to doing the works of what it says in here? It's not, well, did I do this? Did I do this? Did I do this? Well, let me see if I did this. Oh, my, my, oh, I don't know. Just love the Lord so much that you want to please Him. And as you read through, you say, oh, wow, I didn't even know I was supposed to do that. I've been doing that. That's wonderful. Isn't that good? Why? Because it's a labor of love. And we love Him because He first loved us. It's a labor of love. Let us work well in this day for night coming when no man can work. Now I know things change. We have physical limitations. And as we get older, those limitations are more emphasized and we're more limited than we used to be. I, I got in, oh, this is a long time ago, I got in from somewhere and, uh, before I ever came here as pastor. And I was traveling a lot. And, uh, and I got in, I think, on Friday. And on Saturday, I had to leave to go somewhere else to be there to preach on Sunday. And I just didn't want to go. Because I was tired. And I started writing a little poem, put some music to it, wrote a little song. Nobody's ever sung it but me. Probably nobody will ever sing it but me. But every once in a while, I read over. And I was thinking about the physical, the physical demands of that, and, and how that, you know, one more night away from home. One more night, we're both alone. And it seems that it's so hard to carry on. And you just, I came to the chorus and I said, so I'll just stop and rest a while. Then I'll go another mile. Through God's grace and by his power, I can go another mile. I may not make the whole journey right now, but I can go another mile. I can take another step. You know, I remember thinking at that time, at that time I was putting those words down, I remember thinking, when I get home next Thursday, that was on Saturday, that I was leaving, I was leaving on Saturday. I said, when I get home next Thursday, I don't have to go anywhere else for another week. I can rest then. I can sleep. I said, so I can make it to there. I can make it to there. I can make it to this time. And, and, and so forth. There remaineth, therefore, a rest to the people of God. In, in Revelation chapter 14, verse 13, it says, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. Yea, they rest from their labors, and their work be followed. You see, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, when Paul talks about the judgment seat of Christ, he talks about your feelings are not going to be judged. But your works are judged. They're going to be tried. Whether they are wood, hay, or stubble, or whether they are gold, silver, and precious stone. Oh, how are they going to be tried? How are you going to separate all that out? If all that's in your life and all that's in the mix and all that's in the other, how are they going to be separated out? They're going to be separated out by fire. You know, just take the whole mess, throw it in the fire. The wood of hay and stubble are burned up. But what's left is gold, 
children where it's stone. I don't want to be left standing in agony. I don't want just to be agony. I want there to, when there are all that other stuff burned up, and all that stuff goes away, and God blows the ashes away, I want there to be some precious stones down there. I want there to be some precious metal, some gold, silver, precious stones that I can take and say, oh yeah, Lord, here, I want you to have this. I want you to have this. It's not much, but I want you to have it. Your work of faith, your labor of love, your labor of I mean, even for this next Sunday, even for this next Sunday, even in, even in, here, take this card. I want you to take your phone and scan that, look at it, look at that video and see if that would be a blessing to you. And, uh, you know, maybe you can give it to somebody else who needs hope. Maybe you can do that. So good to see people doing that. So good to see them around at places. Went to, what is it? Angels. Uh, anybody know my angels? Biscuits that big. <laughs> over on the table. Over on the table. We have all kinds of business cards. And over there was a dear coach card. Right there in the middle of all of them. I thought that's true. That's not a whole lot of that. Somebody might not pick one up, but they might just take your phone and take that home with you, like that. Like that. All they gotta do is put that, put that on there, put that phone on there, and it's in their phone. They can look at it in A wonderful privilege. A, a work of faith. I hand that to somebody by faith. I put a stack of those somewhere by faith. That's what I do. I do that by faith. Now, I may not grab somebody by the shirt and drag them over there and say, hey, put your phone on that. I may not be able to do that. But I put the opportunity, the opportunity. Whenever we have something like this right here, as I said last Sunday, that's probably not going to make anybody come next Sunday. But whenever you invite somebody to next Sunday, they're going to say, oh, yeah, I saw that. I saw that in, in the Madison. What is it? Madison County Joint. Madison County Joint. Or I saw it in the echo. Or whatever like that. Your work of faith. Work of faith. Your labor of love. There's coming a day of rest. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 9 says, There remaineth therefore a rest unto the people of God. So I'll just go another mile. And I'll stop and rest a while. Then I'll go another mile. And I'll stop and rest a while. Our limitations change. Our abilities change. With age and with health. With things like that. But we just keep on. As long as God leaves us here on planet Earth, He leaves us here for a purpose. And it must be His purpose. Now we talk about physical labor, and we talk about spiritual labor. Now I must say this. There is a work which God alone does. And he says, keep your hands off. That's his work of justification. His work of salvation. For by deeds of the law shall no flesh be justified. Now to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith shall be counted for righteousness. Not by works of righteousness which we have done. But according to his mercy hath he saved us. By grace are you saved. Through faith. And that not of yourself. It's a gift of God. Not of works. Lest any man should boast. Jesus said come unto me 
all ye that labor. Now understand the ones he was talking to. The people that were before him, when he made that statement, come unto me all ye that labor and labor, were Jews who were trying to keep the law in order to earn heaven. He said, come to me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, you're laden down with keeping the Sabbath. You're laying down with obeying the 613 commandments of the Old Testament. You're laboring through this sacrificial system. You're laboring through putting up with the priestly hierarchy and all the things that the Pharisees and the Sadducees laden you down with. He said, come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. And then after that rest that I give you, he says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me and you shall find rest. So there's a rest that is given and there is a rest that is found in the labor of love. Oh, well, this is Labor Day weekend. Labor Day week, oh land of rest, for thee I silently will. The moment come when I shall lay my armor by and dwell in peace at home. We'll work till Jesus comes, we work. Till Jesus comes, we'll work. Till Jesus comes, and we'll all take a day off. <laughs> oh, my. I don't know about you, but I love my Lord. I love my Lord. And I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful that the Lord has allowed me to serve Him in these years that I've had here on this earth. And I tell you what, whenever I stand before you, I don't want to be standing just in ashes. You burn me down. I don't want to be just ashes. I want to be gold, silver, dirt, stone in the midst of all that. And you know, next Sunday, next Sunday, whenever I walk up on this platform and I look at it, you know what I want to see? I want to see some people I invite to be here. I want to see some things. Now, I like to be in a situation whenever I invite folks. Never really been in this situation except just a few times, a brief period of time in my life. But where I can invite them to sit with me. Come on, I'll meet you out front. I want you to come in and sit with me. I want you to come in I can't do it. But I can look out here and see it. That kind of sit. You might have somebody sit with you next time. But you invite them. I want you to come. I want you to go Whatever. Now well, let's work. Let's work. Like everything dependent on us. And then let's pray. Like everything dependent on God. And we'll work together. How many of you want to do that? Say amen. 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 All right. Let's do it. Let's stand together. I don't know. We'll give an opportunity. Uh, let David come give us a song. And uh, Ed, Serene, thank you so much. And, uh, We'll sing a verse to a song. Somebody needs to come. Say, Lord, I need to be serving you. I need to be serving you. Now, I don't know what God might want you to do. But I promise you, God has something for you to do.